first off is with the the injury to Joshua Jefferson, knee injury, which will have him out for the rest of the rest of the season. And that's it is a crushing blow for St. Mary's. I think it it really limits them on the ceiling front of how how far they could potentially go. Uh, we saw how critical he was against Gonzaga uh, up in Spokane. We saw how critical he was against Colorado State. We saw how critical he was against the against USF the first time around. And I do think they they did miss him uh, in that game the other night where USF just barely missed out on beating St. Mary's and Moraga. 11 points, 11 and a half points, 5.7 rebounds in WCC play. He's been shooting 54% and 40% uh, since the calendar has turned to 2024. It does mean that you're going to see a lot more of Luke Barrett. It does mean you're going to see a lot more of Mason Forbes. And we've start, we've seen some nice things from both of them, not only recently, but throughout the course of the season. Uh, foul trouble, I think, is going to be a critical component for both of them to make sure that they are able to stay on the court. Uh, without, without Jefferson, it does make this team a little bit less Trying to think, a little bit, a little bit less, um, obviously a little bit less athletic, but also less versatile uh, than than what th- this team would be if they still had them. And another, and another injury that just kind of really takes it to this front court, or at least the observation of an injury. Uh, Harry Wessels on Saturday did notice he had his left shoulder in a uh, in a sling on the sidelines on Saturday, and no. No diagnosis. I do not have any additional information on what that is, but it's not a good sign for a team that is already missing someone on that front line. And now you you're missing your backup center. It's going to make it a lot tougher on this team to to potentially play some of the bigger teams that they might see, even the likes of say Gonzaga, uh, as we know, like that's a they're a team that relies so heavily on their front court. Uh, in the size of their front court that come Saturday, this could be a factor um, in both cases, obviously more so for Jefferson than for Wessels. But again, like you're, it's testing the depth of this team. And I, cause Barrett Dukas and um, Mason Forbes, who are going to be sliding into that, those roles and then those minutes at the four and the five, I think are going to be fine. Um, but I don't know how sustainable it is uh, going for not necessarily for the next couple of weeks or whatnot in the NC in the WCC tournament, but for the NCAA tournament, I think it limits the number of teams that you're going to be able to match up with. And if they get a good draw, maybe it won't matter. But as we as we've seen, it's been really helpful that St. Mary's has been able to adapt and play different styles as they've seen different teams in the NCAA tournament the last few years. And also, part of it is also just the number of minutes that we might have to see from the likes of Mitchell Saxon. Uh, Saxon is also another guy who is is not. Um, he's we know how good he can be, but we've also seen him get a little bit tired again when he has to play 30, 35, 40 minutes in a game, and he might have to carry a little bit more of the burden, a little bit more of the load on that front. Uh, as we get deeper into the season. And and to an extent, you kind of expect that to be the case, like as you get into the tournament, because now you're shortening your roster, you're shortening uh, the guys that you expect to really contribute, uh, and you have little margin for error. And the one thing at the very least, you know, like you're going to get really good play out of sacks and mis- nearly mistake-free basketball. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to kind of just see how it, he is used uh, minutes wise, as we get closer and closer to March. 